Welcome everyone. Today I want to spend 15 minutes to help you fix the way you're using Oracle SQL Developer. My name is Jeff Smith. I'm the product manager here at Oracle for SQL Developer and you can reach me on Twitter at thatjeffsmith or you can find me on my blog at thatjeffsmith.com. So I'm a horrible backseat uh, driver. When I watch people uh, use our tools, I have this personal um, problem where I just I can't stand it if someone's not using um, the software the way I think they should be using it. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to try to teach you how uh, I think you can be more productive uh, using the tool. Now, by the way, it's not uh, your fault that perhaps you're not aware of all of the best ways to take advantage of these things that we've built because the product is so huge. Uh, just the PL SQL uh, IDE itself, I, I could spend an hour doing tips and, and tricks on that. And you have a full-time job. You have to code, you have to build things, you have to fix things. Whereas uh, my job allows me the opportunity to go dig, dig deep and, and learn all the ins and outs of the product set. So I hope if you give me this 15 minutes uh, I can share a few of the things that I've learned about our tools and you can take advantage of a few of them. If we had the uh, really awkward uh, elevator ride I could give you the full uh, pitch for what this tool does uh, but again I don't want to spend uh, more than 15 minutes doing this talk. So. What I'm going to do is concentrate this talk on just three things that will have the biggest impact. This is what this uh, lesson is going to be like. I'm the Stig. You're the scared guy on the right. It's going to be okay. So, step one. I want the tool to feel good and look good and not be a distraction as you're trying to code and work with data all day every day. So the first thing I want you to do, if you haven't already done this, go install a pleasing font on your uh, machine. In Windows it's just as simple as uh, downloading the font file and pasting it into your fonts folder. Once you've found one, uh, just go into the preferences on the code editor page. Uh, there's a subpage called fonts, and in there you can change the font that you're using, and you can also use um, that page to set the font size. So just a little trick: if you're having problems getting certain characters to display correctly, you can put those characters in that sample text um, space, and then as you switch to the font, you can see a preview how that's going to look below. Another thing you can do is instead of using the default uh, theme for the editors where you've got black text on a white background, you can completely customize um, how your code is going to look as you're working with it. So uh, what I've done is gone on to GitHub and someone has built uh, this theme that you see in the screenshot and I've just downloaded it and installed it uh, that SQL Developer can use. However, we ship out of the box with uh, five additional themes that you can uh, use. And if you want to start with a theme and then customize it, you can change any aspect of how an identifier is shown or how a syntax error is shown. You know, instead of uh, a red squiggle, if you want a, a triple yellow dotted line under that to help that make it easier for you to see, um, you can change that. But definitely don't run um, the uh, the stuff out of the box because I think you're saving um, you might be saving yourself a few seconds and not going into the preferences and messing with that but you're going to cause yourself headaches and eye strain and let's, let's avoid that if we can so here's an example of um, this theme and play uh, but this is also an example of how you can um, set up your desktop so I've got my connections panel, and to the right of that I've got my code outline, and underneath that I've got my find the database object panel. And you can just drag these around your desktop, um, and you can hide these as well if you'd like. When you're setting a font, you might want to also find one that's fixed width. So if you're like me, I do a quite a bit of 
um, SQL plus type work in the code editor. So when I'm looking at execution plans, for example, uh, a fixed width font just helps make those plans print much, much nicer. So that, you know, that's just a tip for me. You might not ever do that, in which case you don't really care about fixed width font, but working with uh, data in the database, I think fixed width fonts is a good way to go. When you're setting that font, that also applies not to just how the um, text looks in the editor, but it also affects how the text looks in your result grids. So when you're browsing a table or when you're running a query and getting that back into sort of the spreadsheet view, um, the font size and the font face applies to that. There's also uh, an additional option in the preferences. So if you go into tools, database, um, worksheet at the bottom, there's a preference in there that says use an alternating um, color scheme for the grids for the worksheet. I recommend you turn that on as well. After you've written your code, you're going to want to format it to make it look pretty. So lots of preferences available for a formatter. If you're on an older version of the tool, you might want to upgrade to version 4.2. We've completely redone how the formatter works. I think it's a lot more uh, res resilient and it supports pretty much the entire 12C Release 2 database um, syntax library. So that's something to um, keep in mind. And then also in terms of um, organizing your desktop, remember that you can have multiple code editors open concurrently. So where I've got a spreadsheet, I'm sorry, where I've got a worksheet to the left and a, a code editor to the right, um, you can do that in the tool very easily. So let me just live demo that very quickly. I've actually got it set up here, but let me undo that so we can see it from scratch. But what I want to be able to do is have my worksheet and have my RESTful service definition on the same page together. So all I need to do is right click on the desktop and say new document tab group. Easy peasy. And then when you want to undo that, just right click again and say collapse document tab group. But I could also take this and drag it over. Just drag it to the bottom and to drag it. There we go. So you have a lot of control how the desktop's going to look. And once you set up all these panels, if uh, you want to remove all the clutter, just double click and it takes you a full screen display of that code editor. Double click again and it sends it back to what you'd expect. All right, step two navigate like a boss. So You've got your connection tree. Trim that tree. So disable things that you're not working with in the database from the browser. And again, that's done via the preferences. So on the database page, there's something called navigation filter. Enable it, and then turn things off that you're not using. That just makes that tree not as tall, not as deep. The other thing you can do is use the schema browser. So instead of having a tree, you have a drop-down view to browse schemas, to browse objects, and then all the same features apply. To activate the schema browser, just right-click on your connection and ask for schema browser. So there are my list of schemas. Here are my list of objects, again, based on that preference set already. You can also completely bypass the browsers and just directly navigate to your objects. So you're in a code editor, you want to go to an object, all you have to do is take your mouse over that text with the control key held down, that'll turn into a hyperlink and then you can go open that object. So let's go see that. Uh, let's turn this into employees. So I got my control key, I got my mouse over, I double click, it opens that table for me automatically. That's much faster to get to that object than coming over here and looking for it. And then finally, we have the auto search. So I'm not sure where my object is or what, it's, um, what schema it is or what, even what kind of object it is. So I can just type it in. 
I'm going to hit Alt G. That automatically does a search and finds those objects for me. And then I just click on this and it opens the object. So my search results kind of turns into a um, navigator. So there are several ways faster than using the tree. If you're going to use the tree, use filters and use um, the preferences to hide things that you're not going to normally browse. Automating things. So why type the same code over and over and over again? So I've got a, a code snippet here called F25. Let's double click to go full screen. I can just activate it. So it just saved myself that bit of typing. So I'm sure you can have much better examples than I will have. You know, set these up to do uh, what you're going to be using over and over and over again. So these are where you define them. So here's one I've got called SSF2. And a little trick, these brackets tell the tool what text to highlight um, once the code's been inserted. So I say SSF2, and then I can just immediately type over what I want. So I can say employees. way faster. So that feature can also be um, set up to be auto replace. So on that preferences page, if you check auto replace, as soon as I type uh, this code snippet ID and hit the spacebar or a carriage return, it'll automatically replace that snippet uh, ID with the snippet text. The way it's set up out of the box, you have to activate it on um, by request. And the keyboard sequence to activate it is the control key plus the spacebar. So when you see me type um, F25, um, control spacebar automatically pops that out. If I had auto replace turned on as soon as I hit F25, enter, that would that would expand. And here we are, screenshot of the preference page again. Ports. Um, so automating stuff. In this case, you're going to automate those queries um, that you are running on a regular basis, and we're going to turn it into a report. Uh, so here's an example of a report that shows me for my schema the automatic uh, SQL tuning advisor tasks and as I click on an item up top I get the report for it down below and I just don't want to have to um, run those queries manually so I've codified it into a report so the reports can be all sorts of different variations this one I've got a primary report which runs this select star from DBA advisor findings which gives you the results up top in that grid and as I select an item um, the block of code um, here is executed and the task name is taken from the uh, parent grid on the selected row and fed to that select statement and it just prints it out. I have an entire talk just on how to use the reports uh, I will say that most people don't take advantage of the reports, and I think it's worth every minute of your time spent because it can just save you um, the effort of finding those queries or finding those files where you have all these important queries, and, and you just build them into the UI of SQL Developer itself. Step four. So I originally did this session at the KScope 17 conference uh, last week in San Antonio which is uh, put on by the good folks at OD Tug, And I tell them, hey, if you want to get your ticket booked for that next conference, um, you know, 
take these things that you learn and share them to coworkers. So do a lunch and learn. Um, sit people down. You know, if you learn something that you found really helps you, you know, don't don't hog that. Share it with others, and then maybe you can use that to justify your next conference trip, that nicer monitor, or even maybe a raise, or you know, get set to the team lead. Lunch and learns are fun too. It's a good chance to uh, knock out the general routine of work. And once you get that raise or promotion, you can take yourself someplace nice. Or if the raise or promotion is not quite what you're expecting, you can at least, you know, maybe get yourself that Jelly of the Month Club subscription. So, um, if you are a member um, of OD Tug, uh, we do these recordings all the time. And as a member, you can go peruse the hundreds, if not thousands, of them that have been done over the last 20, 30 years. As they um, put them on, um, they're free to everyone live. Um, if you're not a member of OD Tug and uh, you want to catch up with us, you can also follow me on Twitter at that Jeff Smith. Uh, you can follow our development director that's overseeing all of these tools. That's Chris Rice. And then we also have a product account, Oracle SQL dev and you know look for us at your conferences so we'll be there at oracle open world we just came from kscope i'll be at the east coast conference this fall get out there uh, meet your fellow uh, community members and learn something that you can take back and share with others thanks for being a great customer thanks for being one of our nearly five million users worldwide uh, if you like these tips, uh, you can do two things, or you can do three things. You can like the video, yay, that always feels good. Uh, you can share this um, with your uh, friends and coworkers, and you can leave a comment telling me which tip you like the most, or um, send me any questions that you have. Thanks everyone, uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and happy 4th of July.